All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for the responses I've been getting, good and bad. All right, but it's kind of letting me know I'm doing the right thing. So with that being said, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe because this is just the beginning. All right, I'm going to be dropping content after content. So on this one, what I'm going to talk about is one of the top three things I hated the most about working for the California Department of Corrections. All right. I'm actually going to talk about cover two of those things. All right. The first one's a secret. All right. Once I reach maybe 10,000 subscribers, then I'll let you guys in on it. All right. We got to get there first. We got to cross that bridge. So. Dirty cops, dirty cops, dirty cops, dirty cops. You guys know of them. You guys heard of them, right? It's no different from us working inside the walls. All right. I'm only going to give you my perspective, right? Because I can't speak for other people. I despised dirty cops, all right? And I'm talking about the ones that were bringing in dope, bringing in contraband, bringing in cell phones, tobacco. Um, <clears throat> two reasons. One reason being that it went against values and ethics, right? That I believed in, that I believe in. And just to reaffirm, I wasn't always this dude, all right? I wasn't always a, a man of honor, integrity, but <clears throat> I've, I've, I've paid the price for, for those mistakes in the past, okay? So this is the new journey. And um, if you swear, you know, to, to uphold, you know, the law for whatever reason, um, me personally, me personally, I do not believe that one can go from like being normal to being like talked into bringing con contraband. I don't see that. I think you're dirty from the start. That's just my opinion. Um, so coworkers would disagree on that, but that's just my opinion. Okay. Um, yeah, I got 16 years in the department. I got stories, stories for days. I got, uh, male partners, female partners, uh, Black, white, Mexican, it really didn't matter. Um, it's all the same. Uh, so that's the reason, number one, it went against my values. Reason number two is because that's extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous to our partners. All right? I've seen good, good cops get assaulted as a result of, as a direct result of, Cops bringing in contraband for inmates, okay? Because inmates are going to get um, desperate. And if they're about to get caught with their uh, contraband, they're going to more than likely attack you or in an attempt to kind of get rid of it, destroy it. They, somebody's going to get hurt in the process, right? So that those are the two reasons, all right? So, yeah, man, I've seen it. Um. One in particular, and these are all not secrets. You can just Google this shit. It's all on there. Um, it's all on there. They all get caught, right? So my message to anybody who's dirty or plans on being dirty, you're going to get caught, all right? And that's something that an OG schooled me when I was new in the department. They eventually get caught, right? And this story I'm about to talk about took about 14, 15 years to get caught. But nevertheless, the dude got caught, right? Um, <clears throat> I used to carpool with this individual, uh, from where I lived to Sentinella State Prison. And, um, he was a funny guy. He was funny, right? Yeah, quick with the jokes, quick with the humor, uh, good impersonations of other, of, <laughs> of our coworkers, right? Um, but I'm always kind of cautious on who I allow in my life and who I don't, right? Just by observing people and their demeanorism, demeanorism, mannerism, demeanor. Fuck, I just made up a word. Um, <clears throat> but it was kind of weird in the housing unit. This individual would always sit with the blacks on the black side of the day room watching the game. 
Now, don't get me wrong. There was plenty of times where I'm, where I'm, my ass is tired of sitting at the podium, and I would go to a television on either A section, uh, one side of the housing unit, or the other side, C section, and I would stand there and watch the score and maybe chop it up with the guys. Um, <clears throat> business, right? Like fucking minimal. Uh, n- you don't hear what I'm saying. But this was different. This was like sitting on the bench with them, kicking it with them. It always just struck me as odd. Like, right? You little flags start going up. Um, you hear talks, right? But, but rumors are rumors. In prison, rumors are rumors, whether they're true, untrue. A lot of the times they're untrue, but nevertheless, people love to just... It's, Prison is like high school, but times a million, all right, with the drama, with the gossip, with all the stuff that goes on in there, um, and I'm not putting a 10 on it, and I'm not bad-mouthing it, I'm just telling you guys the truth, um, he would do that, he would do, uh, <clears throat> this individual for like fucking 14 years would always Go to his car in the middle of his shift and come back, right? That's another thing. <clears throat> and I know what the guy was doing. The guy was doing a dry run, ensuring that they weren't searching people. And then when he fucking saw that the coast was clear, he'd go go uh, back in. More than likely with contraband. Like I said, I've never, I didn't physically catch the guy. I never f- caught the guy in action. And that's another thing. <sighs> There's two things we're not going to do, right? As, as co-workers were well what I'm not gonna do is like spread I'm not gonna talk on the subject so that he can get he can catch awareness I'd rather just stay quiet and wait till they get caught right and maybe people think that's what the green wall is oh they're they're being silent they're being quiet so that their buddies can get away with it fuck no it's that I chose to be quiet so that I wouldn't spook the guy, right? So that I wouldn't give, so that he didn't get the heads up. The dude knew what time it was, right? When you're dirty, paranoia sets in, all that other shit. So, and secondly, it is none of my business as far as I can't apprehend the guy. I can't jump on him. I can't put handcuffs on him. I can't start interrogating inmates. Hey, what do you know about this guy, that's the last, that, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen with anybody, all right? We're not, that's not in our role. They have roles for that. That was sure the fuck wasn't my role or anybody else's for that matter. Um, so it's one of those things, you just wait it out. You wait it out. And um, that's what this subject on and this particular story lasted 14 years, right? Until the individual finally got caught. <laughs> Grills. Right, you know, the grills that people wear, diamonds and shit, platinum, whatever they wear. Um, Inmates started having grills in prison. Now, here's a fucking dumb thing about it. One, if I was an inmate, I wouldn't need a grill in prison or jewelry, flashy jewelry. Two, the last thing I'm going to do is put a selfie on me on Instagram in the cell with a fucking grill. Right, there's people, I mean, you're, you're asking to get caught. You're asking to get caught, whether you're a bank robber on the street, and this isn't a secret, this is fucking common sense. I mean, goddamn. So, right, we, weird shit wherever this guy is working, right? Just red flags, and everybody's just trying to do their thing, like, not turning a blind eye, because turning a blind eye would be like, oh, I'm pretending not to see it. It's kind of just like, I'm going to keep doing my fucking thing, and he's going to get caught. They are going to get caught. So, I mentioned in the beginning of the story that there's two things that I, or three things I can't stand the most. One is a dirty cop. The other one is cowardice, being a coward. Being a coward can be anything for if we're all getting our asses kicked by inmates and you don't act, you don't jump in and help us while we're fighting for our lives, I deem you a coward, right? You could be scared, you could freeze. I don't know, man. Whatever you want to call it, whatever story you want to tell yourself to alleviate that responsibility or guilt, 
to me, that's cowardice, right? People running the opposite direction of when <laughs> we're fighting inmates over here and all of a sudden this guy's going to go over here and get the gate and just let everybody in. Come on, man. We know what you're doing, all right? You're not fucking fooling anybody. Cowardice, right? Those two things. Well, this guy that I'm speaking about knocks out two things at once, man. Dirty cop and the coward. <sighs> on, uh, on one of the podcasts I just spoke on, on uh, the convict's perspective, I talked about a massive staff assault that happened at RJD in August. Of, uh, but I believe the year was 2020. And it was fucking huge, right? Two cops got stabbed. Um... Sent to the hospital. As a matter of fact, man, the inmates took the baton away from the cops, smashed the cops' face in. It's just all fucked up, man, right? And before people jump on the comments, this and that, saying, I know who it is. You guys know who it is, right? Um, As far as that, that individual involved, that member, right? So... Disrespect, not disrespect, I get, I know what respect is and I know what disrespect is, right? So I'm just telling you that situation. That incident happened in front of a building, right? On one of the yards there. You got, you got three cops initially versus like seven uh, inmates initially, right? You got weapons involved, you got... You got inmates taking away the pepper spray from the staff, pepper spraying the staff. Um, and then they call it, you know, code three staff assault, code three staff assault. That's the fucking worst, right? Uh, we're, when we come, we're coming, okay? That's, that's what time it is. When we hear that, it's fucking game time. So, Incidents happening right in front of the building, right in front of the fucking building. Sally Port or the rotunda uh, Sally Port door opens. This one individual that I'm telling you about sees, sees his partners in green getting fucked up. Fucked up. Turns around and realizes, oh shit, I got to lock up the inmates in the shower. Come on, man. As, as other inmates are pushing past him to go join in on that, on that staff assault or it w attempted murder, to go join in on that attempted murder on a peace officer, okay? Um, fucking coward, right? And, and I'm not here to talk shit or uh, you guys wanted to hear it. You guys wanted to hear it from a, from a, a guard side. And I use, I use the term prison guard. I know a lot of people like to use the word correctional officer, but in my head, I consider myself old school. Even when I started as brand new, I considered myself old school. I don't know. It's just a thing that I did. So, but yeah, when I, when I use that word, it's not to diminish the, the position at all. So that's it in a nutshell. Like the dude was dirty for 14 years, right? We knew about it. Can you say knew about it or kind of assumed it or... But we just stayed in our lane, stayed in our role because that's kind of like a fucking uh, FBI sting going out on, on like some big criminal organization or crime group outside. And then like a PD officer comes and just fucking up the whole uh, case. All right. That's probably it's in our, it, the FBI is going to be pissed. All right. And the bad guy is probably going to get away and the case is going to get thrown out by a judge. You know, that's just the possibilities that can happen. So that's the mindset, all right? Um, the dude managed to hit two out of the fucking three of my pet peeves. Fuck. Um, <clears throat> dude that I used to talk to, not chop it up with, but talk to, right? An acquaintance, co-worker. Um, gets, finally gets caught, gaffled up, I don't know, with the feds, whatever he was doing was, was fed, a federal crime of some sort, but clearly the guy was smuggling in contraband, and uh, yeah, that, that's, that's one story, all right, um, keep letting me know in the comments, all right, uh, I'm reading that shit, let me know what else you want to hear, I got fucking 16 years worth of experience, all right, have a good day.